So rule number one for tonight. Huh? You are not allowed to provide any and or all descriptions of Rise of the Resistance. Okay. I feel like that is a reasonable request. Fair enough. Um, can I give you my surface level uh, synopsis? Uh, that depends on. What... I will preface it. I will preface it with saying that I've already given this to Monkey, and he too wanted no spoilers. And what was Monkey's response upon you giving it to him? Intriguing. I think was his exact word. <clears throat> How about a rating? Out of 10. That's complicated. Because, I mean, my general impression is that I want to be, I want to ride this thing. I want to go to Disney World and ride. Yeah. And, and, and in a much less Shat, in a, in a much less, wow, in a much less Shatner esque manner. But, um, as things stand, I don't have the requisite. Uh, season pass to be able to go in and to ride the rise of the resistance experience Which so we also need to talk about tonight as well but we'll get to that are you saying i need to spend money for a season pass no con but continue okay um <laughs> um because that's one of those things that's probably not going to happen. Um, <laughs> surprise! Um, but, uh, but, yeah. Um, how about this? Is it at least as good as Flight of the Falcon? It's complicated. <sighs> okay. So I'm just gonna come out. I'm just gonna come out and say this: there are no spoilers in what I'm about to say. You know, um, but my um, my having watched a YouTube video ride through of it, uh huh, which I have not done, which you have not done, partially ruined my experience. Okay, um, because I knew what was coming up as it was coming up. It was still cool to see it in person. Mm -hmm. Um. But and the video I watched was a straightforward shot. They never turned side to side. It was like I was watching the the front of the vehicle, and it never changed. Right. It's like somebody wore a GoPro on their chest, basically. Okay. Um, and so I got to look around a lot more, um, than I did on the video. So I did get to see more, but that, but but knowing what was coming in combination with um, how they're currently doing things amidst the COVID um, situation, it kind of ruined it for me. Okay. Um, and so I also rode uh, the new ride, uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad. Okay. And that ride was freaking amazing. Uh, just the technology alone in it was amazing. And I came out of Rise of the Resistance and I told Monkey I liked or I enjoyed the Runaway Railroad better. I think if I were to ride it again post COVID, it would be a different experience. Um, but as it stands right now, I would probably put it. It wouldn't be in my top five rides at Disney. Okay, so right now I do want a small spoiler. Were the stormtroopers wearing surgical masks over their respirators? No, because that would be hilarious. Not. No, well, they weren't, but all the cast members were. Like, they would just, like, you have stormtroopers in, like, full respirator masks and uh, N95 strung over the top of it. That would be whole, absolutely freaking hilarious. That would have been funny. Mm. Okay. 
I want to know nothing more about this. <laughs> um, uh, so aside from that, how was Disney Masters? Um, more crowded than I expected it to be. Um, they recently opened it up from 25% capacity to 35% per- eh, capacity. Uh-huh. But I felt like it was a normal capacity. Um, most of the parks were at that 35% capacity every day. Right. Um, as we couldn't get passes uh, for the last few days um, for anything except Epcot, which is under construction right now. And nobody's um, going there. Um, but, but yeah, it, so when we went, um, you remember when we went and we were in um, Magic Kingdom and it was almost shoulder to shoulder yeah, with people? Mm-hmm. It was nowhere near that bad. But think about our lightest day there. It was worse than that. So I, I don't know where they're pulling that 35% capacity from, but it felt like more than 35%. Maybe they're counting like all the parks in total and the down attendance at Epcot is counting against the other parks. Maybe because Epcot was the least crowded. Okay. That doesn't really explain to me like how it was. That just tells me like what. Oh, I had fun. Um, I was very tired. Um, most of the time, um, I went there expecting a very relaxing, you know, just casually walking, uh, from place to place. I didn't expect to ride a lot of things, which I didn't ride a lot of things. I rode, I, I probably rode the amount of rides this entire trip that we did on that one day at, uh, Hollywood studios. Okay. I probably rode, we probably rode millennium Falcon, uh, more than I rode rides period this time. Um, just because I wanted a more casual laid back, uh, experience. Um, and I was expecting it to be more so laid back this time, but, uh, last minute, my father joined us and you've seen him at Disney. Yes. So yeah, like he got frustrated with me several times because I was just like, I'm, I'm not running from ride to ride. <laughs> um, so, but I had, I had fun. I was exhausted the entire time because I moved more day one than I have all year. Um, working from home and mm-hmm. going nowhere. Yep. <clears throat> um, so I definitely, uh, Realize the importance of uh, getting up and moving <laughs> a lot more frequently now. Uh, if if for nothing else, than to have a less miserable time walking around Disney. Um, but I had fun. Like I said, uh, the uh, Mickey Mini Ride was your it, highlight. Was fun to ride. I, I enjoyed it. My daddy hated it. He said everything looked like cardboard. But I. You know, I thought that was the point, <laughs> so uh, I enjoyed it immensely. I mean, two D to three D only can only translates so well. You have to. Oh uh, well, you've got to see this. It it actually looks incredible. And if you're not worried about spoilers on that, I would recommend going and trying to find a video. Um, it won't do it justice, but um, the amount of and they designed this ride before or after they designed Rise of the Resistance. So it's actually got newer technology in it. And like, you literally feel like you're in the cartoon and it was, it was just the visuals and um, it's on a trackless system, just like rise of the resistance is. Um, And it's just, it was incredible. Um, It's definitely the number two ride at Disney right now for me. Uh, number one, obviously, being uh, uh, Smuggler's Run, a.k.a. Millennium Falcon Ride. Mm-hmm. Um, but we rode the Safari, yes. I think, six times in a row. I did see the 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 uh, pictures from that, or at least some of them. Yeah. 
some of them. Um, I got a lot of really good up close pictures um, of a lot of the animals that I've never gotten before. I still have yet to get a decent picture of a lion, but I'm so freaking frustrated because this trip I could have gotten that picture. But the <clears throat> so we tried to get on the last one we could, and uh, we ended, they closed them down at five. Um, hopefully next time we go, it'll be open later and we can actually get on a later one because they do have nighttime safaris now. Um, that, but, um, mm. but with COVID they were, you know, closing everything down early. Um, the so the, the lions are more active the mm -hmm. closer you get tonight. Yep. Um, so on our last ride, we were about a minute and a half to two minutes away from the lion area and we could hear them roaring. So they were getting, it was their time to start being active. And when we got there, they were all walking around. Um, but the first view you get of them, they're really kind of far away, um, especially on the rock that they're on. Uh huh. Um, and so I got a couple of good pictures there. Um, but like I said, with my phone, if I had an actual camera, I could have gotten amazing pictures. Uh, but with my phone, I got the best pictures I could. Mm -hmm. Um, then you go around to the front of it and you can't see the lines at all because the rock is tilted up in such a way. And they weren't at the edge. They were kind of towards the back. Um, and there was another, like a gazelle type creature. Uh, the, uh, Bonto Bach, I think is what it was, uh, was off to the side and our tour guide was talking about that. Then we get onto the other side of this rock where the lines are. And like, they were almost within spitting distance of us. I could have gotten an amazing picture. Had my uh, driver decided, not decided that, hey, we're done with this tour. Hit the gas. <sighs> it was very frustrating. If she had just, because she, because she stopped on the side that we couldn't, that we were really far away from them. She stopped uh, for the Bontabach. Mm -hmm. Then we got to the other side and she just gunned it. And I was just like, you, you can't stop for five seconds to let me get this amazing picture. How dare you? Yeah, I know, right? Um. But I got uh, a good picture of an elephant. I got a couple of good pictures of the elephants. Um, I got some really good picture pictures of the um, uh, what are they called? The the gummit. Uh, I've got to look it up. Uh, Um, they are called, stop calling them cattle. Give me the actual name, uh, Ancoli. Oh yeah. The Ancoli. Yeah. Yeah. I got some amazing, like they were like, I got, I got one snuck up on me. So my arm is in the picture because I was taking a picture of one that was maybe five feet away from us. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, at the corner of my eye, I saw one who was literally almost touching the truck. And so I popped it into wide mode and clicked the picture right before we got past. So I've got a really good picture of him. It's just not framed very well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that one will take some light editing. Um, and it's almost like a, it's almost a top down view. He was right there. Um, so I got some some good pictures of a lot of the animals that I don't normally get good pictures of uh, just because of their lo location. Right. Um, we also. I actually got to uh, talk to one of the cast members because uh, the uh, Disney Plus has a show called um, um, The Wonderful World of Animal Kingdom uh, okay. at uh, Disney World. And it, it's a lot of the behind the scenes and the day to day of, of the animals there. And they focus on different animals uh, in different episodes. And uh, <clears throat> so one of the episodes is the uh, birth of a stingray. And uh, so we went to the aquarium over uh, at Nemo and Friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to talk to one of the cast members about that show and about the, uh, the stingray. And we got to see the stingray and we got to see... Um, the uh, the manatees that they've had on the show, I got to, and I actually got to even see one of the divers that they interviewed for a day in the life of. Um, that's also on Disney Plus. Um, that was cool to see him, like to have seen him on the show, and then to actually see him doing his job in person was pretty cool. 
kind of like, wait, wait, you're famous. Give me an autograph. Well, he was diving in the water, cleaning the tanks. So here's a waterproof <laughs> pen. <laughs> he, could, he couldn't hear me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I had a great time. Oh, and we stayed at, we stayed off property. Um, I got a hotel for eight days, seven nights for $430, which is absolutely nothing for a week uh, down in Orlando. And the outside of the hotel we pulled up and I was, it's actually a motel. Mm -hmm. uh, we pulled up and I was like, I really hope that the pictures online weren't a lie because <laughs> we've had that scenario before. It's like, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, but I went in and uh, got our rooms and we went into the rooms. The room that we stayed in looked better and newer than the ones that we stayed in at Disney. Mm -hmm. like me and you. Um, the beds were comfortable uh, for the most part. Um, I was laying on my side one night and I could feel a spring, but I mean, they're uh, better than most hotel beds I've slept on. Uh, air conditioning was excellent we were freezing most of the time because we kept it on 64 um i mean in michigan was, this is swimming weather yes which was just awesome i loved it um so the hotel was a major like if i ever go back well not ever because i'm i'm gonna go back i'm don't even joke yeah um, you're, you're going again in like six months we don't even <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you are older than the key blends my parents are actually going in march uh, with all the kids skin. Mm -hmm. I won't be going on that trip. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I had a great time. Very good. Very good. I'm only, I'm only a little frustrated that my sister and dad got into the room before I did and, uh, wrecked it with all their luggage before I could get pictures. Mm. Cause that's one thing I like to do as you know, because I did it at Disney. I, I got there before you. So I'd already taken the pictures by the time you got there. Yep. Anyways, I, uh, I, when I go to a hotel, I take pictures of the room before I even unload anything, um, just so that I can post, post clean pictures on the review. And, uh, that didn't get to happen this time. I was very sad. I mean, so this is kind of, I mean, since you're, since you're talking about the hotel and you pull up, uh, that reminds me of two things. Number one, um, a couple years ago, uh, I guess it was like 2016. A friend of mine came to visit and like she clearly could not stay in my house. Um one of those situations. So she says, Well just just like direct me to, you know, like a nearby hotel. Cheaply, please. And I go, Okay. So I look it up, I find a nice cheap hotel. Okay. I find a cheap hotel. In my mind, it's it's fine. <laughs> Apparently, that was not the majority uh, um, opinion on that particular hotel. Motel. Definitely a motel. Anyway, so she shows... Well, <laughs> what, yes? Motel's doors are on the outside. Yes. Definitely motel. Just, just clear. Definitely a motel. So she shows up, and like we go to dinner. I take her. She's tired. She's in a different time zone. She's like, I need to get some sleep. I says, great. So I take her to the motel and we pull up and she, and I'm like, I start to like turn the engine off to go like, you know, get her stuff out of the back. And she look just like looks at me with this like murderous intent. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you're kidding, right? No, 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 no. You're, you're, this is where I'm staying tonight. I said, well, I sent you the website and everything and, and the pictures and, and you, you booked your room here. I'm not staying here. Why not? Like to me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely baffled. I'm like, what's wrong with this place? It's clean. It's, you know, it's got lights in the, it's got lights in the, uh, um, uh, parking lot. This looks fine to me. I'm not staying here. I, it's 10:30 at night. Where are you going to go? <laughs> so she whips out her phone, cancels her reservations in the parking lot, and then like 
get, makes new reservations at like the Holiday Inn down the street. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Clearly, number one, she and I are going to have, I will never be anything more than friends because. <laughs> Because I'm not that prissy. <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're a lot. You're a lot um, more frugal. We'll say. No, no, no. We we can we can just we can just be very blunt about it. As long as like I can have guarantee two things. Number one, I'm not going to get rained on, and number two, I'm not going to get bitten in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, hold off on that second one. Just to, you know, I'm not going to get bit by anything in the middle of the night that I didn't bring with me. There we go. Okay. <laughs> As long as I'm clear on those two, I'm good with just about any place. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, so you tell me you're pulling up, and it's like, oh man, I hope that the pictures were correct. I'm like, am I gonna get bitten? Am I gonna get rained on? <laughs> As long as the answer to both those questions is no, I think I'm doing just fine. Uh, but I can understand how some people don't view that to be a proper metric for a place to stay overnight. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm going to stay somewhere to stay somewhere, yeah, I want it to be nice. But if, I, if, if it's literally just a place to sleep, mm -hmm. as long as it's better than my car, I'm good. Fair. By better than my car, I mean that I can lay parallel. I mean, I can do that in my car. So I can't. <laughs> One of the really nice benefits of having the, the back row seats that lays flat, you just stretch out in there. Yeah. Um. So I used to have a um, Ford Explorer, and I could literally put a twin size bed in the back. Uh -huh. I never did, but I could have. And so uh, I threatened lots of times to move out and live in my car. Um, then I just moved out and moved into an apartment. Yep. Um, but I, uh, I'm, I want my next car to be um, something where I can lay down the back seats in a permanent fashion, almost, almost. Mm -hmm. um, and just, that would be, that would be fine by me. Just find me a place to park. <laughs> A cyber truck, like, I I legitimately want a cyber truck. Are you familiar with cyber trucks, Masters? Yes, I I am. Mm -hmm. Are you judging me now? Because everybody I else am. I've told that to has judged me severely, super hard. Yep. <sighs> That's fair. I mean. They even redesigned them, and I still and I like the redesign. But I I think I like the original blocky, angular, like fifties future, vision ones better. But that's that's probably just me. Um, I want the ones that look like you know just a lifted DeLorean. <laughs> My father wants a DeLorean. I don't know why. I don't. Well, eh, they're kind of iconic and iconic looking, but. Maybe he just wants to relive uh, um, Back to the Future. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep, anyway. So so uh, Disney was, was good for you. Was. Uh, mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Um, what was the thing that you were going to bring up, Masters? Oh, so uh, there's not a hard date yet. Uh, but in 2021, the Star Wars experience opens okay. at Disney, i.e. the hotel oh. that is literally attached to Galaxy's Edge. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a maximum of two nights yep. to stay. Because it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a multi, it's, a, it's like a story progression that goes on yeah. while you stay there. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they're already booked, I'm sure. No, they haven't opened booking yet. Darn it. Um 
It'd be really so, convenient if they hadn't, if they had, and then it was already booked solid for the entire thing. <laughs> like that'd be really convenient for me, because because then you could be like, oh darn, I missed it. Just missed out on that. I'll have to <laughs> wait. You know. <laughs> That would be too convenient, though. And then there's you. <laughs> Who are like, I'm going to be up that night when they, when they open up everything, and I'll just be sitting well, there eating refresh. Up at 7 o'clock uh, a.m. my time is when they open up booking. And you'll so, just be sitting there hitting refresh over and over again. <laughs> I have repeatedly gotten up at 6.30 in the morning just to get online in mm-hmm. time for... Uh, Availability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is literal. Disney is literally the only thing that I willingly lose sleep over. Um, no matter what time it open or what day it opens, um, I refuse to go before November or before. Oh, absolutely. Before or I'd say before October. October's probably good. Uh, oh, that's another thing. So it was significantly less hot. Um, this time than it was in July, obviously. Uh huh. But it was still in the upper 70s and low 80s the entire time. Had I not had to wear a mask, it would have been perfect weather. Uh-huh. Um, the times that we did get to take our mask off, i.e., when we were eating or drinking, yeah. Um, it was very very pleasant. Um, but the masks were just like I could I could feel my life being sucked out through the mask. Hmm. It wasn't to the point of miserable like it was in July, but yeah, I, I could definitely tell my mood was changed just by wearing it. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fair. Like so I'm, I don't, I don't think I'll be going back until all of this is over with. Yeah. Um, I so. am kind of curious. Because they did have a big thing before about you couldn't wear, you know, face covering masks when we were there last year. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that that particular restriction is no longer in effect because, in fact, you have to wear a face covering mask. So I'm wondering precisely how they're interpreting that and if I could get away with wearing a Mandalorian helmet. You absolutely could not get away with that. Crap. Could I wear a modified Mandalorian helmet? <laughs> if, if the helmet was to loop around your ears and cover your nose and mouth only. Like you can't cover your head with your anything? No, you, you can cover your nose. You have to cover your nose and mouth and it has to loop around your ears. Why? Like, I'm not like I'm I'm straight up not going if that's the case, because like. I I bleed back there. <laughs> like, yeah. Um badly. Like I I'll, I'll wear like a regular like surgical mask for like a half an hour and I'm like I take it off and like the straps are red. Yeah. I wear glasses. That's already a raw area. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And I have a gigantic uh, First time we went I tried to get I tried to uh use a gator but they won't allow those. I say, and I have a gigantic head, which only compounds the problem because it puts more pressure on the straps and digs them further into my ears. And yeah, no. Disney, why you do this? Oh, what am I thinking of? Um, yeah, that's that's on a uh. uh So I'm, uh, this is, I'm, I'm now trying to think of ways around this, um, because I saw some, eh, 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 eh. masters. What about something like this? There we go. Bam. That should be totally fine, right? Totally cuts off all airflow. You will suffocate slowly. (laughs) (laughs) Or where's the other one? I saw another one that was like... It's almost like a welding mask. 
Uh, almost, but actually, that's like the the mask that they wear in um, uh, in Avatar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was my, that was my second thought. Well, that, like just just go to the Animal Kingdom and walk around the Avatar thing. So you're part of the cast. <laughs> can't breathe the air. Here. You can't breathe the air here. Where's your mask? <laughs> um, I saw this ridiculous thing, and I can't find it. Um, where it was like a 1950s space helmet. It looked like that. Oh, wait, here we go. Is this it? Yeah, here it is. Um, like, uh, how how is this not you know kosher? That should be totally fine, right? <laughs> I'm not even gonna comment on that. Oh, that's that's beautiful. I I think that this is the wave of the future right here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be. Uh... Oh man, it's just acceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. But yes, I would love to be a part of the Star Wars Experience Masters. I would love to go and do terrible, terrible things to can I join the empire or whatever version of the empire they have around at that point? That'd be awesome. Right, right now I'm looking at um, <laughs> your post in, in the D and D groups. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Yes. Lord of the Rings of, but Legolas has a sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It is. Uh, uh, first now that you mentioned it, repost it. Turn it. <laughs> trying to catch up on the the conversation in here mm -hmm. we're meeting on tuesday to discuss yeah i got that. things yeah okay uh, oh and it's so extrovert of ducky to have already made plans for tuesday oh yes it's like that's the most extrovert thing i've ever read uh yeah kind of i mean so i kind of did the same thing this week I was hoping I was going to get out to be able to go hunting, which would have actually made it so that I wasn't able to be here, so that I wasn't able to be here for the podcast. Um, but uh, all the guys that I, was, that I typically go with and who have access to like land we can hunt on were like, yeah, we're just not going to call you back. And I'm like, okay. And then yesterday morning, I get a, I get a, I get a call back from one of them and he's like, hey, would you like to go hunting tomorrow? And I'm like, well, I've already got like three gigantic plans in place for Friday and Saturday. So no, <laughs> I mean, yes, but no. And he goes, Oh, uh, you, you could call me. I'm like, yeah, I called you on Monday and last Saturday and last Thursday and you didn't get back with me. So I assumed that we weren't going. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry you felt that way. Like, other conclusion was I was supposed to draw. <laughs> but crazy. So I, I, I did make, you know, alternate plans which precluded my going hunting, you know, which despite the fact that I love it. And then I got my rifle sighted in. And that was fun and painful. I still have a lovely uh, green bruise on my right shoulder from from sighting on my most in a gaunt. That was an enjoyable experience on Monday. Um, found out something uh, yesterday when I went to the range for the second time this week. Um, apparently, because there's a guy there who also had a Mosin, and he's like, yeah, back in World War II, this was one of the ways that the Germans discovered who were part of the Russian military when they were invading uh, into Russian territory. They would pull up to a farm, and they'd bring the people out, and they would have all the men show their right shoulder. And if they had a bruise there... That was in the shape of a buttstock that was a soldier and they would you know deal with them um and i'm like oh that actually makes total sense <laughs> um yeah fun yes very educational to go to the gun range sometimes <laughs> a lot of times more educational than it probably should be Uh, 
So, uh, even thinner. <laughs> yeah, shots fired, Sass. Shots fired. <laughs> um. So. Yes, sir. Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Do you want to back up two weeks so that you can cover episode four, or do you just want to go for episode five? Because episode four has been covered on this podcast. You just weren't here for it. Yeah. So <clears throat> episode four, episode four. Oh, episode four is uh, where he goes back and gets his uh, his ship repaired yes. uh, while uh, taking on the Empire. So, oh my goodness. Let me go back to my notes. Uh-oh. He has um, notes. Yes. Um, so J-Seed has a Star Wars spoiler section in his discord uh -huh. uh, that we regularly discuss um the mandalorian in and other star wars things but right now it's mostly well actually right now it's mostly um rebels because uh one of our friends in there preggers is um just now uh, watching rebels just now watching rebels yeah okay um so he's going through that and giving us the spoilers on those as he's watching them Okay, so moving on up, on up to the side. Okay, I don't know where that came from, but it it did. Very. Do not regret it. I do. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! How far up is it? Okay, here we go. All right. So, um, what happens when you take notes in a public forum? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, go oh, ahead. Nope, that's too far. That's uh, that was week before last. That was episode three. Okay, so um, oh, this is the one that I was up early and watched it uh the as soon as it aired. Okay. Um, so <laughs> uh, I loved like I I got flashbacks to um, um, uh, my goodness. That one movie with the people in spaceships and Groot. Anyways. Guardians of the Galaxy? Guardians of the Galaxy. I got flashbacks to Guardians of the Galaxy during that opening scene of episode four. Uh, when he the child was in there trying to plug things in. No, nope, mm -hmm. the, the blue one. Put the blue one in. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then, let's see here. Um. Uh, what is her name? Cara Dune. Is she, yeah, is she a, what? Was, what is she? Or so, was she? So Cara Dune is played by Gina Carano, and uh -huh. Gina Carano is a former UFC fighter. No, not I'm talking about the character, not the oh, the lady. Former Rebel Shock Trooper. Shock Trooper. Okay, yep. well, it was Shock Trooper. I said that earlier this week to my dad, and I was like, "Was she a Shock Trooper? That sounds right, but I don't feel like it's right." It means um, they hit the ground awesome. and blow things up. She's awesome always. Um, so I was glad to see her return. Um, oh, then they went into that uh, that room, and it had the floating things, and I was like, is that Snoke? No, but it is cloning. Yes. Which, makes, um, which actually makes a whole lot more sense in light of episode five, but go ahead. Yes. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, uh, there was a point where, uh, a stormtrooper got thrown off and his helmet came off and like bounced on the ground. Uh, -huh. uh, and I was like, Ooh, there's another helmet for Ezra. But from rebels. Yes. Yes. But, um, let's see here. Oh, and when he landed on the planet uh, and then one of the red guys, uh, the red guy was going to fix his ship mm -hmm. as they were walking away. He turned around and I was like, I don't trust that guy. I don't trust him. And then at the end he had planted a freaking beacon on the ship. Of course. Yep. yep. I was like, I knew it. Yep. Um, but oh my goodness, seeing, seeing, uh, I don't even know the name of his ship, but seeing that thing at full power, the way he was able to maneuver and everything. Yeah. It was just, mwah. 
That was that was one of the best parts of the whole episode. Yes, absolutely. Um Oh, and then me and uh JC got to discussing um possible um spoilers uh coming to us, uh, which we ultimately decided that we'll just have to wait and see. Um but we got to thinking about how we know that um uh Palpy is coming back and that there was cloning involved with all of that. Uh-huh. Um and they're cloning and then they were talking about the M count, the Metachlorian count. Yep. And so we know he comes back, so they're ultimately successful in these experiments. So who are they getting the Metachlorian Metachlorians from? It's like so we were like I was like, do they ultimately get um Gorgon? Grogu. Grogan? Grogu. Grogu. Do they ultimately get Grogu? Or um is do they do they track down Ahsoka and you know get them from her? Or do they get them from another Jedi? And so we had all these dark theories going about um how they actually get that. Um but then I was talking to a cast member this week uh-huh. and he thinks that um that they are cloning for um ah, I forget what he called them. It was something about um Dang it, I can't remember. I've slept since then. But he, he had other theories uh that I had no idea what he was talking about, even though I nodded along like I absolutely knew what he was talking about. Um, so yeah, that's my main thoughts on, on four. They're a bit incoherent because I did them as I was watching it. Mm -hmm. Um, and also other people's people were watching it as well. So they made sense to them as they were watching it too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this week. Oh my goodness. I did not expect Ahsoka to be in this so freaking quick. Like she was right up front. Uh huh. Like, like I was like. Like I was sitting, I had just ordered food, uh, I, uh, and I was sitting there putting it in my mouth and she came on screen and I was just like, what? Oh my God. It was amazing. Just the opening sequence was just, the whole thing was amazing. Uh, definitely best episode so far, in my opinion. Any other more uh, complete thoughts in that regard? Yeah, I have a whole thing. Okay, let me just, let me, I'll just read what I put in Jason's thing word for word. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I thought it would be at least a few more episodes before, before Ahsoka. Bam, right off the bat. I was a little worried in that last fight that she was going to get killed, but I should have done better. Uh, there were so many great moments. Uh, also, I, don't remember who I told this to, but I knew he already had a name. Grogu. Uh, although I spelled it Grogin, um, mm-hmm. which is wrong. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, I was able to see a lot of the surprises coming before they happened. Um, like the fact that she was going to jump out and attack Mando. And that they were going to have this tense moment of, hey, we're, we're on the same side here. Um, but I think it was funny that she was like, I hope it's about him <laughs> pointing over at Grogu. That was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Um, so my favorite part or my favorite part was I was sitting there watching it and she goes in to fight the lady. And I was thinking, wait, there's, there's one more assassin droid out there. Unless she took him care, uh, took care of him off screen. And as soon as I got that thought out of my head, mm-hmm. he kind of, he crawls up on the roof and I went, Oh, there he is, and then Mendo went. Poof. And I was like, "Oh, never mind." <laughs> so, so I, that was my that was my favorite part of the entire episode. So I got a, I got a question for you, Masters. Yeah. Uh, how did you spell it in J Seeds? Grow. G R O G E N. Grow again. Oh darn! It's so close. Because when you said grow again, I thought of uh, something from Blue Collar TV back in the day. Dan Grogan's House of Gravy, and I just think that needs to be thrown in here at some point. And now it has been. Ha. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, let's see here. 
Um, oh, I'm uh, I'm interested to see how they play out uh, um, Mando's connection with uh, Grogu. Mm-hmm. Um, how they explore that whole thing, and also who, if anybody, comes to seek out um, Grogu when he ultimately makes his decision. Um, if anybody, um, could we possibly see a uh, young Mark Hamill on screen? Maybe Ezra, somebody else. JC listed a bunch of people he thinks could possibly come. Um, let's see. And then uh, I, I said I foresee a season finale where everybody we've met so far comes up and uh, to kill the guy with the black saber. And I can never remember his name, so I didn't even try. Um, Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and I 100% wanted to see Ahsoka chop off that lady's head. I 100% wanted to see that. So I had some different thoughts about this episode, and I had some different thoughts about the last one too. Um, apparently, who didn't watch the last uh, the last podcast? That's okay. Um, nope, I did not yep. at all. Uh, I got a lot more into the technical aspects of the last episode, and that there was just some some things that in terms of execution and in terms of execution weren't like really up to snuff for me. Um, and there's a couple things in this episode that I think also kind of, uh, tainted it a little bit. And at one point, a lot bit, a lot bit. Oh, um, but that's, <clears throat> that's because I read too much into stuff. Right. Um, always, always. So number one, awesome. The opening sequence with Ahsoka is pitch perfect. I love it. Um, uh, and, uh, no, that, that's a different movie. Uh, Fourteen hours to <laughs> Alabama. Ooh. I can get his address from Brokebutt. Brokebutt doesn't know my address. I can get his address from Ducky. Ducky doesn't know my address. Well, they seem to think they do. Um, they know where I live. They don't know my address. I can get his address vicariously through Roquebutt and Ducky after they ask his family. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we'll make it a surprise. Anyway. Um, anyway. Yes. So the, the opening sequence was, was wonderful. I, I really liked that. Um, I, almost, I, like, I almost felt it was kind of weird that Ahsoka would have attacked him straight away. I, under, I understand why they did it. But, I mean, it just kind of just weird um and also i really wish that she'd have just re- I mean, not really she's a she's a jedi on the run that has made herself known and he interrupts me before i'm able to bring out the next point which would totally contradict that gotcha all right so masters ahsoka is not a jedi yes i know she's not a jedi blah 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 she's a force user everybody calls her a jedi because that's what they know. I and I think that that was a missed opportunity when she's you know on the ground staring up at the magistrate, and you know magistrate like uses Jedi as an epithet. That would have been like so great for her to be like, I'm not a Jedi, and then just like you know force grab somebody off the wall and like you know impale them on something sharp at the bottom. Um, but that's you know that's me. Not well, but she's <laughs> she may not be a Jedi in the in the sense of how she was trained to be a Jedi, but she is definitely more Jedi than, well, she's probably more Jedi than a lot of the Jedi that died already. I would like to point out the fact that in see that in the last season of, uh, of the Clone Wars, she grabs a guy in the middle of a firefight by his blaster. So he can, so forcing him to stand up so that he can get shot by the person next to her. That's not a very Jedi like thing to do. I'm just pointing this out. In, in times of war. I'm just saying, that's not a very Jedi-like thing to do. It, it brings the whole concept of subjective morality into the very forefront of that conversation. Um, mm-hmm. And so, I don't, I don't think that's a very Jedi-like thing to do. And I think that it, she would probably... I, I find her more likable when she is kind of riding that line between good and evil. It's much more interesting character-wise rather than trying to be some sort of, you know... Girl Scout, as it were. Um, and she didn't even bring cookies. But um, I feel I am almost sorry for that joke, but I'm not um, not quite there. 
Anyway, I, I think it's uh, actually fairly in line with the uh, the line of uh, being a Jedi. She didn't pull the trigger. She just uh, made a way to where somebody else could do it. This 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 is what happens when you have a lot of understanding from things in the expanded universe and about how um, actions have consequences and actions that are brought about through the direct application of the force have much farther reaching consequences. Um, like there, there's a, one of the, one of the largest series, uh, actually it might even be the largest series of books um, from the expanded universe. Now it's Martin Hunter legends has this great moral question um, that the Jedi are faced with about killing with the Force, using like exclusively the Force. Because we you know the, the Sith and Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader and they're choking people and blasting with Force lightning. And, well, what do you do with, you know, a... Uh, with a Jedi who kills using only the Force? Because that is clearly aggressive, like ultimately um, no two ways about it. Aggressive for aggressive use of the force, and so they come up with um, a weapon to combat this extra galactic en enemy called the Yuuzhan Vong, called the Shadow Bomb, which is basically a souped-up proton torpedo, which is propelled and launched using the force. Well, that's kind of difficult because then you're kind of towing that line, like, well, we're killing them. And we're using the force. Is this is can we do this? Are we breaking some sort of force rule with this? We don't really know. And then there's a kind of this sort of existential crisis that comes comes upon most of them, but not all of them, in terms of using it. And so, this idea that you can use the force to cause the death of somebody else, whether or not you are directly doing that, still falls into that moral gray area, which I wish that they did a little bit more of a, um, uh a little bit more of a philosophical investigation of rather than just doing it um, and then apparently retreating from it because that would have been a great time to really bring it to the forefront in this particular episode when they're like Jedi and she's like I am not a Jedi haha -ha! and then just start killing people um, which apparently she had no problem doing in the first place because she was clearly not knocking out or disabling any of the guys who were on the ground shooting at her she was oh, straight she was up cutting them in half. Them in half. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, the double strike through the tree, grabbing the cutout. Well, and it's, it's like still standing there. And you're like, why is it still standing there? It should be falling over. And then she like rips out the center and like beans the guy in the face with the uh, chunk of log cut out. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, <laughs> 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 I am totally okay with this. Uh, yeah, I will suspend uh, my disbelief because that was awesome. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, so there's there's a lot of very cool very cool things there. There's a lot of like inter lore things which I think need to be explored much deeper. I was really cool, really happy to see uh, Morai the owl, even just as a very brief distant cameo. Um, I missed it. Oh, you didn't see him? He's in there. No, I I saw a thing on YouTube earlier today, and I was like, I missed that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw it right off. I'm like, ha ha, there he is, and um. So I, I'm happy to see that he's still around. I think, so to kind of cross crossbreed between these two episodes, I'll get to that in a second. Never mind. We're going we're gonna to just focus on this one and then we'll go back to, we'll, then we'll go into theorizing. Um, the going into the town, that was pretty awesome. I thought that, I thought that was a, a great kind of tense, close quarters, firefight kind of thing. I think they did that generally a lot better than the one done in the previous episode, episode four, um, mostly because they didn't have the, you know, they didn't have Ahsoka and Mando pointing blasters at each other accidentally, which was a major issue, which I, which I brought out with Brokebutt, and she totally agreed with me last week. It's like, yeah, please don't point Wait. a live fire weapon at your, at your compatriots. Wait, uh, what? So, okay, if you go in the World's Worst Podcast thread and you scroll up to some of the pictures from last week, uh, I have some screen grabs from The Mandalorian that I posted in there. And, um, yeah, it's, it's bad. The amount, so when you are holding a, a firearm and you point it at somebody else without the intention of killing them or shooting them or anything else like that or intimidating them, it's called flagging. And 
the whole way through the episode, uh, or at least through the like the firefight inside the Imperial compound, like the invading force of you know um, Cara Dune, um, Grief Karga, Mando, and then whatever the blue guy's name is. I forget what his name is. Um, but like the, through the entire thing, they just take turns pointing their guns at each other. And I'm like, I can't watch this. This is so painful. I can't, like you're, you're killing me almost by not killing each other at this point, because realistically you definitely should have killed each other at this point. <laughs> There's no way that you didn't kill each other at this point just yeah, by right. accident. Um, they just spend the entire, the entire episode just pointing uh, blasters at each other. And I'm like, this is, this is difficult to watch. Um, uh, anyway, so I'm really glad that that didn't happen at all in this episode. Even even the bad guys were competent enough to not point their guns at each other. Um, I did think it was kind of I I think right at the end where you know they had kind of like the old west showdown kind of thing between Mando and the other guy. I think that was a little contrived. I wish the other guy had just laid it down his blaster, or like not even laid it down, but just been like. Seems like I'm done here and just like walked away because I think he could have been a very cool character to bring back later on. But apparently for no reason, he just tries to draw and shoot Mando and didn't work out real well for him. Um, so I think that that was kind of a, a missed opportunity for a later appearance from him because he seemed pretty cool. I thought he was I thought he was a good character or at least he had the potential to be one. But now he's dead. So difficulties um also the magistrate lightsaber fight that made me upset i'm gonna be honest Wait, what the the fight between ahsoka and the magistrate in episode five oh, yeah what about it uh it made me upset why um so the magistrate is armed with a spear made of uh beskar right and a, a, I mean, totally discounting the fact that lightsabers cannot cut through Beskar. Okay, fine. Not going to argue about that at all. I'm totally on board with they that. They even went as far as to show it earlier in the episode mm -hmm. when Ahsoka attacked Mando. Yes. And he put his gauntlets up yep. and blocked it. I have zero problems with that. Yep. My problem with that fight is that she is using a six and a half foot spear and she's closing within two and a half feet of Ahsoka to battle her with the six and a half foot spear. Uh-huh. So That's really like stupid. Though. That's really, 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 really unbelievably, frustratingly, mind-bendingly stupid. Well, she's not um Barkamil. I don't care. If and she, she and that, if, if, if okay, in, in real life, in in real life, okay, in any sort of real confrontation between Someone like Ahsoka, who has shorter, almost tonfa like you know, dull lightsabers, because her lightsabers are markedly shorter than regular, but than everybody else's lightsabers out there, especially Kylo Ren because he's compensating. But that, <laughs> oh, that just came out. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, despite that, they're having this, you know, they're this back and forth, and they're fighting and everything else. But it's like, if you have reach, use it, because otherwise you are giving up the greatest advantage you have over someone who has a force user, has two blades, can do all kinds of things that you can't, just back up two steps. Make it difficult for her. And then they're like, oh no, they're fighting each other to a standstill. It's like, and you're like, oh, and, and apparently they got you because you're like, because you're like, oh yeah, I, think, I thought I felt worried for Ahsoka for a second. And I'm like, no, I never, as soon as she got as close to Ahsoka as she did, I had zero concern for Ahsoka, despite the fact that I had zero concern for Ahsoka to begin with, because she's Ahsoka Tano! <laughs> anyway. I, I think you are marketably uh, uh, overestimating the effects that standing two feet further back would have given her. It would have actually made her seem threatening to me, because it would have shown some level of competence with her weapon. Which like I said, she, she wasn't showed using it as a spear. She was using it as a staff. Understandable. Still, that's not the right way to do that. There are like all if you have a weapon that has reach on it, and you're going against someone who has shorter weapons, why would you not use every possible advantage that that wep that your weapon would give you?
I disagree entirely. But hey, I'm just saying, I this is the not necessarily this fight in particular, but uh, weapons based martial arts is something that I have done probably more investigation into than I really ought to have. But here we are, and I've done it, and I know of this kind of stuff, and it's really frustrating. If you say so, that's really frustrating because it's like just. If she had, like, choked up on it, put her left hand down at the base of the sphere and just use it as a proper thrusting weapon, or even you could do, she could have done it as a staff like she was trying to do and just try and cut with the spearhead. That's totally viable, too. Um, and use it as, like, as like a polearm kind of weapon. Way different fight would have been not just more realistically dangerous for Ahsoka, but would have also been probably a lot more entertaining in terms of what they were actually able to pull off move-wise as opposed to just trying to like flail around the two ends in very close proximity. With that kind of weapon, Ahsoka would have probably actually been more effective if she'd have holstered one of her lightsabers, reached out, grabbed the middle of the staff, and then just stabbed the daylights on the magistrate because there's nothing she could do about that. Uh, at least the way she was using it. <sighs> okay. I feel better now. Somewhat better. I disagree entirely. I'm, I, I don't really feel better, but I feel, I feel like a part of that is now out of me and I can just let it go. Maybe. I'll let it go for now. I'll try to let it go for now. It's really tough to let it go. I don't want to let it go. I'm going to be angry about this. Anyway, um, and I want other people to be angry about it too because it doesn't make any sense. Like, um, I'm just going to throw this out here. People who are more interested in stuff like this than apparently Masters is, look up Shadowversity. Uh, he goes into exactly this kind of, not just Shadowversity, but a number of other um, historical European martial arts guys on YouTube. Um, I like Shadowversity as probably being the most um, intel, most the most articulate in terms of describing particularly how um, different techniques play out against each other. Um, but that's not to say that other people are not equally as intelligent or even more so. Um, particularly, I watch like, like Skalgrim and... Uh, number of other people but Todd's workshop is also pretty good um but uh that's that's a whole other story I'm going to try and get off that now anyway um what did you think of the Ahsoka the Ahsoka costume I didn't pay that much I was more looking at her uh tails than anything that was kind of the thing that I was referencing specifically I noticed a lot of scarring that I'm like, I need to go back and look at the show more to see if that scarring is post or during. So those are not actually scars. Those are wrinkles. And that could be for any number of reasons. I'm hoping that it's because they're trying to show that she has some age on her. Um, one of the things that I've noticed first off is that in when we see her in Rebels, uh, her... Because she is a Togruta, um, like she doesn't just have like the Liku that hang down the back and the front. She also has these two like horn like projections that come up. Um, in Rebels, they are almost at Shakti levels. Shakti being the uh, old Republic era, um, or at least I mean, I guess the Republic era, not old Republic, but the Republic era Jedi Master who. Uh, we see briefly in episode two. Um, one of the coolest Jedi Masters, she was on the Jedi Council, super, also Togruta, and this really shows kind of like the full extent of what that sort of main can be. I understand, I, I actually looked it up today because I was like, ah, man, it, it looks good, but it's just kind of off for me. And I was trying to figure out why, and then I realized, and then I looked it up, I'm like, oh yeah, they, they actually shortened those down because um, in Rebels, they're like at shock T levels, are huge. Um, but they shortened those down specifically for Rosario Dawson um, for weight and also for ease of maneuverability in terms of actually being able to, to perform stunts. Because when you have a 18 inch projection off the top of your head, it's kind of hard to do a double backflip, at least as far as I'm aware of doing double backflips, which is not very much, but I can understand how it might be a, a significant hindrance. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's like, I, 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 I can understand the creative choice there, why they decided to do that. And then the wrinkles, I'm hoping, is, a, is they're trying to show age because at this point she would be... This is taking place post-episode 6, between 6 and 7. 
So that would mean she is at least 25 years older or more than we last saw her in Rebels. So she'd be in like her, you know, 40s, maybe early 50s kind of thing. Um, so I'm hoping that, that that's kind of their way of trying to show age as opposed to as, as like almost a balance for when they shortened the things down so that they could have, have her do proper stunts. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, an interesting choice. Um, let's see what else was there. What are your thoughts? Apparently, aside from apparently not being able to spell or pronounce it, what are your thoughts on the name Grogu? It's of the new he. What? I said I have no other thoughts other than the fact that I knew he had a name. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot to say. Okay, yes, clearly that this he's going to have a name. Um. And it makes sense that he would have already have one rather than be named by uh, Mandalorian or, or, or anyone else, um, <clears throat> especially since he's already 50. Um, actually, that would tend to suggest that he was, that uh, Ahsoka might even be getting close to 60 in this timeline, because if Grogu is 50, hmm. Difficult. Grogu is 50 and he was trained in the Jedi, Jedi Temple. Temple. Well, he was trained somewhat in the Jedi Temple. Apparently not very much. Um, he was trained. He was, he was, the fact is that he was there right. before um, Annika came in and slaughtered everybody. Right. Well, Ahsoka was there even before that. Yeah. So she's probably got 10 years on him at least. Theoretically. This is an interesting thought. I had I had not put the timeline in my head yet, but that makes that makes a fair amount of sense. Um interesting. And now it also kind of plays out because I know again, this is one of those legends things where I've put way too much time into this. Togruta typically lived to be like, you know, almost two hundred years old. So maybe a little bit more than that. So I mean that that kind of it kind of plays out. Um, in terms of uh, you know age and physicality, things like that. Uh, let's do let's do some some fun theorizing because you're talking about you know the the cloning that we saw going on in episode four, and you're saying that you, you know, well clearly we know that some of that is being done because of of the midichlorians that they harvested from Grogu. We know that um, because they tell us that. Um, and that there's a higher acceptance rate as a result of it. However, with episode five being the case, um, uh, what we learned in episode five is that Ahsoka is looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn, who is what the, who we last saw at the end of Star Wars Rebels. And we also saw Grand Admiral Thrawn at the end of Star Wars Rebels in... Um, in close proximity to Ezra Bridger. And I'm wondering if, they're, if they may not be using this as kind of a tie-in to the original storyline for Grand Admiral Thrawn as Grand Admiral Thrawn uh, tried to restart the cloning efforts in the Thrawn trilogy written by Timothy Zahn way back in the day. And... He may be trying to use Ezra Bridger's DNA as opposed to that of uh, Joris Sebaoth, who was in the original um, the original trilogy, which was which to in which people who have not read that it is the best Star Wars trilogy there is. Fix yourself. Um, it's not hard to find it. Go out read it. It's amazing. Um, <clears throat> But it makes me wonder if perhaps Grand Admiral Thrawn may be in command over Moff Gideon because in the Imperial system, Grand Admiral does trump uh, the Moff system um, because the military is over that of the political and the Moff is a political um, is a political station as opposed to an admiral, which is military. Um, especially Grand Admiral. Grand Admiral is the highest military rank that was available in the old 
uh, imperial system. And so that makes me think that, you know, Moff Gideon is tied in with uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. And so that creates a nice connection for Ahsoka to be able to like fall in line with um, the current storyline going on with Mandalorian so that they can have future team ups along the way because they are in fact fighting the same enemy. They just don't realize it yet. She's going for the head and Mando doesn't even realize that there is a head up there yet. He thinks Moff Gideon still is. And of course we know now that Moff Gideon, well, they know that Moff Gideon is still alive. We already knew that. Um, so I'm wondering if Ezra Bridger may not be the original host, or not maybe not the original host, but the original source for the materials that they were using to um, to try and restart a cloning process, which may also be tied into the Emperor. You could be correct on that. Um, <coughs> Very funny, Masters. Um, but yeah. So I think that I think that there's there's some there's some merit to it, but I think that there's more floating parts out there than than what you have. I mean, you didn't have the context of what Grand Admiral Thrawn's history was because you didn't read the uh, expanded universe novels, correct? Correct. Okay, so I, you know, I do have that context, so I can throw that in. And can I, if if they are going to, um. If they're going to try and bring that in, which I think they are, because I, I, did, I discovered a new term today, which I'm going to start adopting and using a lot more frequently since I found it, and I think it's amazing. They are referring to uh, Star Wars, Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, now Star Wars Mandalorian, um, the probably the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, you know, the Bad Batch, all these things which are falling under the heading of Dave Filoni as the Filoniverse. And I think that's amazing because he is doing a, he has done a fantastic job already with the Clone Wars and Rebels in terms of tying things in and creating a cohesive narrative across multiple series with references back and forth one to the other and you know tie-ins and cameos and everything else like that in order to make that cohesive narrative work across a much broader period of time. So and now he's carrying that over into the Mandalorian. Which makes me think that perhaps this was all planned back when he was making Rebels and he introduced Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yeah, there could be something here, I wonder. Um, and so with that being the case, um, I am I'm, I'm optimistic. I, I think... Oh, here we go. With Grand Admiral Thrawn now being confirmed to be at least some part of the Mandalorian world and likely that he's confirmed to be alive because Ahsoka is still looking for him. Uh, do you know any enough about him to have a fan casting for him, Masters? Um, I mean, I've seen Rebels. Okay. You've seen Rebels. seen Grand Admiral Thrawn. Good his voice, whatever the case might be. Um. <clears throat> Do you have a someone you'd like to see him play? Someone do you have someone you'd like to see play him in real life? Don the blue makeup and the black hair, the red contacts. Nope. I do. I do. You wouldn't have brought it up. I know. Um, now this is a stretch casting and is absolutely not ever in a million years going to happen. But I think probably the best person I could think of to play him. Benedict Cumberbatch. Think about it. Think about it. Do you need to have a reminder who Benedict Cumberbatch is? Nope, I know who Benedict Cumberbatch is. Okay. I'm just I'm just trying to get some, some feedback here, Masters. Am I am I totally off my rocker? Do I is this this does this not work oh, for I you? You would do an excellent job. Looking for more enthusiasm. Um, <laughs> I've told you several times. You start going off on rants about Star Wars, and I will tune you out faster than lots of things. <sighs> you started it. 
I was talking about Mando specifically. You took it out of that realm. No, this this is part of yeah, Mandalorian. This is part, part of, of the it, Mandalorian. But, it, but it's all speculation and theory, and I'm not about that life. How are you not part? Like, I want the best possible outcome. Like, I want to be happy watching Star Wars. I want, I want to, I want to go so into things. The reason you're not ever happy watching Star Wars is because you have all these theories that you want to come true. Then they don't do them, and then you complain because they didn't do it the way you wanted them to do it. I if you don't do those up front, then you have nothing you're expecting. I make no, I make no predictions or theories or anything else like that that are not that I am not first given reasons to believe by the source material. That's the thing, though. There is no source material. There is source material. They make it up as they go. There is no source material anymore. There is source material. Every time that they make an episode, that is source material. Every time they make a movie, that is yes. source material. But it, Every time it, they write a book, that is, that is source material. That, that has nothing to do... Well, it has some to do. But nine times out of ten, the episode that you see, that's all they were thinking about during that time. I sincerely doubt that. Except I, for, well, Mando is planned out season to season, but... I sincerely doubt that. Oh, I mean, so, like, I believe no, it's... That's, that's fact. So... Man, Mandalorian is planned out season by season. When they start episode one of season two, they know what's going to happen episode eight of season two. What, I'm, what I said was I don't doubt that they're doing that. What I'm saying is I doubt that they're only doing that. I believe that they're doing much... You've seen the three newest Star Wars movies, right? Those are not under Dave Filoni. <laughs> Though, and we had that. Do you want to get back in that conversation about how they were halfway through filming episode nine and they had yeah. no way to finish the movie yet? Yeah, that that's how they do movies at Disney. It's not working. They're changing up their strategy now. <sighs> but well, we hope they're changing up their strategy. Uh, but that's how they've always done movies at Disney. They did not in when they were making Frozen two. They did not know that the mother was the one calling. Um, Elsa until literally three weeks before the film was set to release. That explains where the end of that movie was so convoluted and stupid <laughs> and made no sense. There's a reason the sequel. <laughs> uh, so you remember, you remember the opening, the opening number from uh, Muppets most wanted. No, I'm not you. It's still great, you know. We're doing a sequel. We're oh, backed yes. by popular demand. We're yeah. doing a sequel. Yes. So strike up the band. Yes. Well, there's a line in there that says, um, that's how it's done in Hollywood. And everybody knows that the sequel's never quite as good. Exactly. Like because they don't plan it out. Like, uh, is it too much to ask? Yes. No, it's not. That is a it totally really is. reasonable request to make. A... It's, it's really not because when you think about it, the time and effort that they would have to put in to plan out every single movie uh, that they want to do within a certain franchise. And then if the first one bombs and then they've spent all this money and time and effort to do all of these other movies, well, now they're scrapped and they're out that money. Uh, so the... it is completely illogical to think that they would plan out every single movie all at once. No, that's not what I was going to say. What I was going to say, is it too much to plan out the movie you are going to make based logically on the movie that you last made? Is that too much to ask? Apparently. I don't think it, I don't think it should be. If you have the source material which that would be qualifying as source material. There, if you have the same writers, even the lack of the same writers, if you just have people who can understand or articulate well what was presented in that last movie, it should be no issue at all to build upon it in a logical, cohesive, coherent fashion. I don't think that's too much to ask. 
I think that is a totally reasonable expectation, not even a request, just an expectation, that if you're going to present something to me with the expectation that you want me to give you money to partake of it, that if you would like me to give you more money to partake of the next iteration of it, that you should logically give me some sort of return on investment in a positive manner for the new one. I don't think that's too much to ask at all. I personally liked uh, Pixar's original strategy of we will not do sequels. I think that that is also a fantastic uh, idea. Um, they have gotten a little bit... F Pixar is very formulaic, but that's the whole other story. Um, like, if in terms of, like, story progression, every Pixar movie is the same. They're all fish-out-of-water stories, person gets separated learns something about themselves, comes back to the group and like is reintegrated as, as a new, as their like better version of themselves. It's the, it's the Pixar formula and it works really well. Um, but they don't really make sequels. It didn't really, it didn't really work in the good dinosaur. Oh, that's. Or cars too. Both of those are exceptions rather than the rule. Um <laughs> Um, and and those are just execution things. Um, they they just mess it up. Like, and Cars Two doesn't really follow the formula because Mater doesn't change at all. You're he's right. he's the one who's separate. So so Cars Two def like by definition was destined to fail as a Pixar film because it doesn't follow the Pixar formula. I rested my case. <laughs> <laughs> that case was rested a long time ago. Um, yeah, here we are still talking about it. Um, yeah, so I want I want good good stories. I want to be able to take existing an existing framework and make logically based deductions on how that's going to result. Because that's how everything in life works. That's how it ought to work. There's a reason that the idea of the Deus Ex Machina or the MacGuffin are kind of, are not kind of, are generally viewed with disdain by any sort of artistic writing community because they're cheap ways out when you, the creator, run out of creativity. by saying, well, we got to this point and we don't know how to fix it, so we're going to J.R.R. Tolkien and the Eagles to pick up the the party to get them out of this bad situation. That's a deus ex machina. It is an unforese it's an unforeseeable event that comes in to get the hero's party out of a bad situation. There's no, like there's no real warning involved with with that coming to pass. Now there's a little bit more in the books, but in terms of, um, and there's that scene on uh, Orthanc in uh, the two towers where he's talking to the little bug, where Gandalf was talking to the little bug, which like, but you don't know what the bug's doing. You're like, is it going to go tell Aragorn or somebody? You don't know what's going on. And then the eagle shows up. Oh, okay, that's not random at all. Um, but going to a much further extent is is uh i think preferable because then you when you have something that's established that you can build upon if you just had a, a line of dialogue in there you know gandalf is telling a story you know oh, once upon a time i flew on the backs of eagles okay and then the eagles show up oh okay that's a thing gandalf why didn't they take you all the way to mordor um <laughs> just asking for a friend you know um and there have been people who try to theorize that out, and none of their theories are any, are very, uh, you know, helpful. Um, but it's a it's still a fantastic, overarching, beautiful story, and I love it. It's still one of the greatest, probably the greatest film trilogy of all time. That's tough for me to say as a Star Wars fan, but as a total body of work, Star Wars is superior. But in terms of individual trilogy, the um. Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings trilogy is pretty tough to beat. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. 
But yeah, it's, it's, uh, and, and the thing is, it all comes back down to that, that foundational basis for upon which you can build your, the rest of your narrative. And the more that you build up your foundational basis, the more jarring it is to the audience when you divert from that. A la episode 8 and episode 9 of Star Wars. Difficulties. Anyway. I feel somewhat redeemed. Or Do you? Somewhat. I feel, I feel like I have properly expressed my feelings on that now. Um, <laughs> and all the frustrations at it. Uh, I, I'm very interested to see what they're going to do going forward. Um, if Ezra Bridger is not the one who was the basis for the cloning practice, he is a very high probability in my mind to be the one who comes to pick up Grogu. Um, like very high probability in my mind, but, uh, I will, I will stand by to be surprised. I just hope they don't make up like a totally off the wall someone to fill that role. I hope they actually do something again with history. And I think, I don't think that's going to be an issue because Dave Filoni, like I said earlier, is very self-referential and he's very good at doing so. So I think that that will likely be the way things go. I don't think they're going to get Mark Hamill to come in and be uh, Luke Skywalker to pick up Grogu. I don't see that happening at all. Um, I don't either. Uh, that was just a, just a off the top of my head kind of thing. Though it would be um, amusing, if not hilarious, just to have a cameo from him at some point. Uh, it would be, but like they'd have to do something kind of extreme to make it happen. Because... Um, I mean, there, there's a reason he is suited to play old Luke right now. I mean, and, and it's not like they haven't, it's not like they didn't de-age him pretty effectively in episode eight for the flashback to, you know, the confrontation with Kylo Ren. But, um, and, I, and I actually just realized this as well, they also de-aged him quite a bit for his uh, final confrontation with Kylo Ren because they made him appear as Kylo Ren last saw him. Yeah. So that was, that was also, I mean, so they, they can do it. It's just a matter of whether they're willing to blow that much of their effects budget on doing so. Um, what effects budget? They had episode one. I know. <laughs> which, which season uh, three, <laughs> which I'm going to, which I'm going to be, which I'm going to be uh, straight and honest. Well, I think season two will take the rest of season two to get to Tython and, to get there, and like they're going to end with him putting Grogu on the, uh, the seeing stone. Oh, absolutely! Like absolutely, that's just how this one's going to go. Um, absolutely, we're gonna we're gonna have an uh, like after this, we're gonna have an episode where he goes where he's like running from Moff Gideon, and I'm just gonna it, next next episode is just gonna be a big shoot 'em up. Like that's gonna be the whole thing. He's gonna be doing some planet hopping, trying to get away from him. Um. Yeah, we definitely need another episode um, similar to uh, season one where he was in the cart surrounded by people. I want another one of those kind of episodes. In the cart surrounded by people? Yeah, remember when uh, he was trying to leave with uh, Grogu? Okay. And he was in the cart. Yeah. And he was like, go, droid. He's like, I don't listen to you. And he's like, droid's like, okay. I want to see another episode like episode six of season one where they break into the prison. I think that was just beautiful. I'd never seen an ugly, um, Twi'lek Twi'lek until that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The internet has ruined me. This makes me wonder what you're searching on the internet. <laughs> um, Twi'lek. I mean, I'm very clear about that. Um, alrighty then. Um, I like blue women. What can I say? Well, there's a reason Avatar is my favorite movie for a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, Katara's not blue. The other Avatar. Oh, I know. I was. Um, 
Good mm. joke. So UA became blue ish. <laughs> um, that's a, I would say it's a dark joke, but it's actually very bright. Um, <clears throat> oh my goodness. So Mumbles is uh, DMing me about DMing. Yes. Um, and uh, he, uh, he's asking me what he should do. And I said, I'm down for whatever you want to do. I said, I'll always be there to break your encounters. He said, that's why I like keeping you around. You always keep me on my toes. And I said, I'll make you a ballerina yet. And he said, we have crossed the line now. <laughs> Oh. Honestly, the... yeah, you were kind of terrifying on that one uh, on that first encounter. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it! <laughs> like hacked four people in, in half, go invisible. <laughs> it was only three. I was standing up there, and I'm like, number one. Dude, I, if I, I had not failed that wisdom saving throw, oh my word. Yeah, I'm glad you failed that wisdom saving throw. It was, <laughs> well, okay, so I'm sitting I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm the NPC, right? I'm the bad guy. Oh. And <laughs> I'm like, okay, so this is turning into a nice fight. I got a nice army here. And then he's like, and then that and then he runs away, and I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> That's not part of the deal. I'm and then, and then, like next turn, and someone so sees that, and he runs away, and I'm like, I'm seeing a pattern here, and I don't like the pattern. <laughs> and and oh then he DMs goodness. me. He's like, okay, make your attack, and then you run away. And my computer crapped out, and I wasn't able to finish finish the turn there. But I'm like, oh, this is very on rails, isn't it? I <laughs> there's there's too much narrative here, not enough, you know, <laughs> variation. Um. Mumbles, I need to be able to play this character, and uh, maybe I haven't been informed enough, but he doesn't seem like the running away kind. Uh, I think he'd stay around. He seems very arrogant. Mumbles. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> but yeah, so uh, my plan was to thorn whip you get in your face uh, because it would have pulled you right next to me. Uh huh. Um, and then raged again. That was my plan. And then I felt that wisdom saving throw. And I was like, crap. Well, I'll whip the other guy. So and then everything. You telling me running. that you saying that tells me that you have two levels, two, two levels, two levels to barbarian and one to druid. No, you only have one to barbarian. Then how are Two you druid, rage? one barbarian. Then how are you raging again? Because barbarians only get one rage. At level nope, one. barbarians get two rages. Hmm. They always have two rages. Always. Hmm. Didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, well, until they hit level 20, then they have infinite number of rages. Infinite rages. Oh. Of course, at level 14, yeah. I think is when they get... Um, sustained rage yeah where they can continue to rage as yeah. long as they want to throughout the 10 minutes yep even if they don't hit nobody yep but yeah so we we do need to talk about this not not just about friday because friday i'm only mildly involved with um it, it, unless there's something more you want to talk because i were you there for the session yesterday yeah i was not i yeah I was like, you know, I'll take a nap and I'll get up like maybe you know, a half hour late in case Mumbles needs me for something. And I got up around 9.30. And I'm like... yeah, it was it was 100% uh, RP. Okay. Um, and I tried to take a back seat because mm -hmm. I don't want to run over anybody, that, especially because everybody is a fairly new to not only D&D, &D, but RPing in general. Right. And so I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. But I kind of sat back and let them do all the questioning and everything. And I only jumped in when it was uh, humorously appropriate, uh -huh. um, which killed uh, almost literally. Um, Mumble says he almost died uh, of laughter. <clears throat> um, 
because uh, we were going through, um, we went into the sewers, uh, and at one point the lady we're talking to called them an aquifer, mm-hmm. and of course Leoric is uh, simple-minded, right? And he was like, "What's an aquifer?" And she was like, "Well, the ducks you came through." And he was like, "I didn't see any ducks. What are you talking about, ducks?" She was like, "You you just came through it," and I was like, "No, I saw no ducks." Uh, Ooh. and and uh, somebody explained to me what an aquifer and a duct was, and I was like, "Oh, a ditch! Why don't you just call it a ditch?" Oh dear, I'm gonna have so much fun with this guy. <laughs> So how did everybody else do? Because I, like I said, I slept through it. I don't. There's, I don't know if oh, there's. Oh, it was great. I don't know if there's a uh, vod or anything I could catch up on. Yeah, monkey's vod. Um, I don't think it's live yet because I think he has to wait twenty four hours. But it'll be up, um, tomorrow mm-hmm. if not tonight. Okay. Um, that works out because then um, I can watch it on two yeah. times speed. Did you re-encounter Mister Justice or is he gone? For- Justice. Tiberius Justice, the the, oh, uh, the NPC no. I was playing. Okay, he's no, not. We, the, he's not the uh, only. We NPC? left that area, went into the sewers, and our entire night was spent in the sewers talking to those people. Okay, we spent three hours talking to one person. I feel well, like three people technically. Out of curiosity, because I missed this part because I got there late, um, and I just had a recording that I sent ahead of me. Um, <laughs> Because I, I knew I was going to be yeah, late. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. How did that whole fight start? Because <laughs> <'cause laughs> like, uh, I'm like, in my, from everything that Mumble sent me, this guy was a legitimate government official carrying out a legitimate capacity of his duties. And I show up and y'all are fighting him. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that was all I work. Um, so... Uh, from the tone I was getting from Mumbles, uh-huh. Mumbles wanted us to fight these people. Okay. Though everything was leading up to us not fighting them um, just because of how everybody's backgrounds and stuff are. Right. So I kind of poked the bear a little bit mm-hmm. um, intentionally, but with, with cause. Okay. So I walked up, there, uh, the group of townspeople that had gathered around um, I walked up and you gave your speech. Um, and then I asked uh, if um, there were any townspeople that looked like they disagreed with what was going on. Okay. And I spoke to those townspeople. And uh, after a couple of insight checks, they convinced me to um, intervene, say something to you. Okay. And so I did. I questioned why. Uh, why the death penalty was given to this guy and what were his crimes. And I was, you know, I was basically just goading him Mm -hmm. the entire time until eventually he, uh, sicked one of the guards over to arrest me. And then I told the guard, if you try to, if you try to put those medicals on me, it's not going to end well for you Mm because I've done nothing wrong. Right. Um, Ah, and, but he's a religious zealot. So everything is wrong. (laughs) And then um, they noticed that we weren't wearing the armbands that everybody's wearing. They called us assassins and then started attacking us. Okay. I didn't, realize, I didn't know anything about armbands. This is sounding very um, very much like a certain uh, 1940s uh, German political party. Um, <laughs> let, let's uh, leave that where it is. Um, armbands. Okay. I wasn't told any of that. I was just told you're a religious zealot who is a, you know, a, he's a high executioner. This is part of his job. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. And then I show up like, you know, expecting this to be like just part of the day. Find a dead guy and try and figure out what's going on from there. And then, and then, um, he's like you're in combat. I'm like, wonderful. Who am I fighting? The party. Oh, Okay. Well, that's fun. <laughs> but oh. and with no other with no further explanation. So, um and I, and I could have gone by, gone back and watched that vod, I guess, but I didn't cuz I'm lazy. And <laughs> um yeah. 
So, so that explains what's going on with that. Um, I, I now have, have another D and D related question masters. That's very, very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's going on, uh, with uh, your message from earlier? I mean, I, I know what's going on at this point, but what led up to that? Um, so I, uh, well, this has not been a secret for a while now, mm-hmm. but I hate DMing, mm-hmm. um, with a passion. Okay. Um, I hate spending time and resources to uh, come up with these awesome encounters in my mind and then having them completely thrown out the window five seconds later. Um, I'm too much of a control freak to be a DM. Um, oh. Huh? Nothing. Um, no, what'd you say? I said I can't imagine. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just not for me. And so uh, Friday night, me and Mumbles and uh, Monkey were talking in the Discord uh, before the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, Monkey made the joke, hey, uh, Mumbles, you're my favorite DM. And I said, yeah, I agree. And so that got the conversation started. And Mumble was talking, was talking about wanting to start to DM more. Right. Um, and they were... T- we were trying to pick a day for the new campaign he was wanting to do. Mm-hmm. I was like, Hey, why not Tuesday nights? Mm-hmm. Well, you could totally take over that. And it was kind of like a joking thing. But then he messaged me this, uh, this morning and was like, Hey, so I'm not sure if that was really a joke or not, but like, if you want me to take over on Tuesday nights, I will. And I was like, yes, please. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Alrighty. No, no questions asked. <laughs> Um, and ever since I sent that message, I've actually been, um, debating on Sunday's game. Cause that was what was my second question. I'm very concerned about that because I'm re I really, really, really like Sunday's game. Yeah, me too. Other than the fact that I'm the DM. Yeah. Um, and like, especially since. Um, Calliope and Fang just got their commissions back. Mm-hmm. It's like, like now I feel like I have to continue doing it. Ask Mumbles if he wants to take over. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, oh, be like, hey Mumbles, <laughs> you want another one? Oh, <laughs> um, because like I got because like, I got stuff I want to do. I got I have I have two diverging paths for Rezo right now. And I've actually told uh, Pixel that I was going to do some role play with him uh, in the, in the in-character chat. It's like once we yeah. finish up here tonight or tomorrow, depending on what time this ends up. Probably I have not point. read a lick of the in-character chat since you tested um, like what, two weeks ago. So did you miss drunk Rezo? Oh yeah. I haven't read any of it. Okay. Drunk Rezo was fun. Um, like, <laughs> uh, like he was salty and unhappy and like his I'm, faith am, is shaken and his goddess and like issues are I, going I, on. I am barely caught up on the general chat. <laughs> like, like stuff is going on and stuff's about to go on further. Cause apparently Rez is about to give pixel relationship advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That's going to go well. Cause the last, I mean, this is not like, generally known and i didn't write it or tell you about it but apparently the last relationship that rezo had tried to eat him so, <laughs> um oh, okay that, that was that was vaguely hinted at and it was kind of in my mind when i wrote his backstory the second time but i'm like yeah let's just make that canon and without actually telling anyone about it and now it's like this is going to be a thing where he's going to be giving relationship advice yeah that's gonna be fun um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> Sorry, Pixel. Um, <laughs> and probably also Micro, but <laughs> we'll have fun with that, right? Um, yeah, I like. I am really invested in Sunday, like really invested in Sunday, and I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have character art or squat, but <laughs> but uh, I I would be very. I would be very put out if that was to stop happening. At least, you know, before I get to do one of the three things I want to do with Rezo. Um, which is actually kind of funny. Because I'm 
I've done a couple of, you know, Muppet characters now in, uh, as you with you as the DM on Tuesdays. I did, you know, uh, uh-huh. Kern Mite, me speak. Yeah, you're 90% of the reason I hate DMing. Why? It was a, that was a joke. Okay. I was like, <laughs> it was, I mean, it would have probably, probably been totally legitimate, but I was just <laughs> checking, you know, like how could I do this worse so I could annoy other DMs, but, um, uh, you being you, <laughs> Well, I mean, I can step it up. I'm sure there's something I haven't done yet. And I was about to, you know, I was about to do Dr. Teeth, which I'm probably not going to do Dr. Teeth now, but, um, because Mumbles seems less bloodthirsty as a DM. (laughs) Also, I was talking with Friendly and I have, uh, now that you're not DMing on Tuesdays anymore, I feel like I can bring this up and not, you know, raise flack about it. Uh, you did that last ki- that last encounter wrong. <laughs> I know. So it you, wasn't entirely wrong. So you were trying to kill wrong. us, is what you're saying? Um, no, I was trying to um, bring a little bit more realism into it. I brought too much realism into it, and also I forgot to do, or I forgot to not do a thing. So I've already told Mumbles and um, and Monkey this. But the four coal balls that were in there, mm-hmm. I was supposed to roll a D6, and they were only supposed to be in there if I rolled a one. Okay. I forgot to roll a D6, and I just put them in there. Okay. Um, the two um, guard drakes. Yeah. I put those two in there because you guys took a short rest, and uh, I thought, well, if you guys have time to prepare, they have time to prepare. I should have limited that to one. Mm-hmm. So I think it would have been a more balanced encounter had I made that one guard Drake and taken the Cobalts out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't realize that until three of you had gone down. Mm-hmm. And then I tried to fix the mistake. Um, uh, then Foxy went down. Mm-hmm. And then I DM'd Monkey and was like, hey, you guys have potions, right? <laughs> um, and he was like, no, I don't have any potions. Turns out he did have a potion. Um, he just forgot he had a potion. Right. Uh, not to mention everybody else had potions. Not me. I didn't buy uh, one. Well, most other people had potions. Yep. Um, but yeah, but I mean, that was all. It was the the four kobolds and the two guardricks were the only additions I made. Well, there wasn't so much that the additions. It was the thing that you didn't do. What did I not do? Uh, Farnum or whatever their name was was supposed to run away. Oh yeah. Uh, well no. He so the um the module says that if the players um <laughs> go into where the guards are where you guys took out all those people right um it says if they go in there three of the guards go and alert him and from there he will either he will either decide to fight if the guards do enough damage to you guys uh-huh. um or he will flee and join up with um the half dragon guy um, in there and that uh, he would fight in there with him um, if uh, he thought that, or if the, the uh, if you guys came down. Right. So it, it did say that he was a coward, Uh huh. Um, but they were winning that fight. So he wasn't going to run. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, because you unbalanced the the encounter, the encounter became even more unbalanced. More or less, yeah. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. I understand. Ow. Or as Wortley would have said, "Ow, oh, man, that hurt." So he didn't have. He was. He's a. He's a cleric. So he didn't have much in the way of dealing damage. He had spiritual weapon. And he had um, flame. Uh, f- what is it? Uh, sacred flame. I say those are his only two damaging spells. The rest of them were um, like um, shield of faith and mm-hmm. uh, cure wounds and healing healing spirit. And Hold person stuff like that. probably independently turned the tide of the entire battle. What now? When when he cast Hold Person on Wortley, that probably independently oh, yeah. turned the tide of the entire battle. Right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it was great. Because Wortley had like three things he could do, and then he couldn't do any of them. <laughs> and I'm like, well, 
this is unpreferable. <laughs> well, when I when I originally did hold hold person, mm-hmm. uh, like when I said, okay, he does hold person on Wortley, mm-hmm. I went, crap, that's a wisdom save. He's going to make his wisdom save. And then you failed it. Mm-hmm. I got so happy. Yep. I love it when a plan comes together. And then it almost completely came together and party wiped. Um. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Dame, you won't have to go through that with us. Um. <laughs> hmm. Now that Mumbles is taking over, and apparently Horde of the Dragon Queen is not going to be what we're doing. <laughs> I was kind of surprised, though. I, I voted to keep going with it because I was having fun trading out characters every two weeks. Um, <laughs> like, after I got over the initial shock and Yeah, reaction, that was another thing. Monkey and Mumbles were both getting frustrated with you for uh, making throwaway characters. And then everybody was getting frustrated with Ducky. Like, so all of my characters were, thro- were like, designed without backstory. But all of them were characters that I could have created backstories if they survived. And they were designed to not die. That's why they got progressively higher ACs and everything else like that. <laughs> like, they were designed not to die, but they weren't doing a very good job of it. Um, Wortley I threw away because ultimately he did not fulfill his purpose. Um, and I'm like, eh, any character he'd be kind of upset that, you know, the girl he was pursuing. So yeah, he'll do something stupid. Um, and I thought that since we had gotten a bunch of hits in on Farnham, that perhaps we could have taken her down um, with just a couple more hits. Apparently I was incorrect in that. So I had a legitimate reason for doing things with that. Um, but at the same time, I was like, yeah, I think he's kind of run his course. So um And then Tick and Talk got uh, shot down, so I was kind of sad about that. I was looking forward to, you know, having, I, I, you know. Uh, again, none of, the, none of the characters that I that I made were specifically throwaways. They were expendable. I was not going to be particularly put off if they died. <laughs> but, because, uh, like... Poshu was was kind of rough. Like I I put a lot of work into him, and then like oh yeah he's he he is the dead. Um, yeah, that one wasn't your fault though. It was a little your fault, but it wasn't your fault. So I don't know if I've told you this, but the funny thing about that particular fight was, if um, Taylor had been the one to confront him, mm-hmm. she would have probably killed him. Yeah, because of the angle of vines or whatever thorny ground and something. Well, yeah. that, but because she could also shape shift. Right. Yeah, but there was, I mean, in character, it was Poshu. Like, there was no one else going to yeah. do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I absolutely knew. As soon as I put it out there. Well, as soon as I read it, I was like, oh, that's Poshu. Yeah. yeah he's going to die. <laughs> what, what, what he should have done, and not that it would have made any difference, would have been to turn to Taylor and be like, do not interfere. Or, yeah, Taylor and be like, do not interfere. This is yeah. my fight. It is dishonorable yeah. for you to interfere. Um, like yeah. he was, he was like a perfect, not, not the, the dragonborn there was a perfect foil for him because it was also a creature of honor as it were. Um, yeah. as long as you acted honorably, they would react, they would react in kind. However, Taylor did not just honor, yep. just honor on your whole family, just honor on your cow. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's funny too. So, um, I don't remember what they were talking about in the discord while we were doing all the RPing, Mm -hmm. but at some point broke, butt put in the discord, the motion Mushu saying dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I commented and say, what did I do? I saw that. That was perfect timing. (laughs) (sighs) So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm excited to see what we're going to do. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how Mumbles is going to start this because apparently we're doing homebrew and that is, uh, all on him now. Well, he's, uh, he's in my DMs. He he wants to do a wild mount campaign, but I was like, 
You have no idea what you would be getting yourself into if you did a wild mount campaign. What is um, a wild because, mount campaign? Um, wild mount is the critical role setting. Okay. Um, so I have seen all of it, um, which I am capable of restraining myself when it comes to, um, references, especially in, in game. Um, but Ducky Ducky is is not, not. (laughs) Ducky is not at all. So it would be every five seconds, her making a reference to critical role. Yeah. Which Um, would, which like the Mercer effect would be doubly in effect at that point. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So I said I would love to do a wild a wild mount campaign because I know the lore, mm-hmm. and knowing the lore is half the battle when it comes to doing um, campaigns. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, I would one hundred percent be okay with that. Just know that if you do, she's going to ruin it for you. Yeah, and she's going to ruin it for everybody else. Um. So now he's he's kind of leaning towards Icewind Dale. Uh, which is the newest campaign setting that's come out. Okay. Um, which I'm also all for. I really wish he would do, uh, what's it called? Uh, Mythic Odysseus of Theros. Um, because that's more Greek mythology setting. Sounded like I it. think I think that would be a load of like I've been waiting for somebody to do one of those campaigns since it came out. Um, but the reason he's leaning more towards Icewind Dale is because it already has a campaign uh, built into it uh, that he could start off with so we could start sooner. Didn't um, you try and get me to do something like that at one point? Because I remember people... I, I remember in that, brief inst- in that brief stint where I was doing the DMs, there being some sort of a Greek mythology one, and like you... Like sent me the information on it, and you're like, "Here, let's do this." And I'm like, "Okay." And then we it was like a one shot or something. And I and I like arbitrarily assigned uh, bonus values for whichever god people were um, were serving. I think I think we only did like one or two sessions on that. Hmm. That was back with uh, Demil and Piratic. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't. No, that was. Um... Uh, um, which one was that? Well, no, because that that, that, oh, that that was Storm King's Thunder. No, no, it wasn't the longer one that ended that ended everything. It was the one directly before that. Like it was just like a one shot. Because Storm King's Thunder, we did, um, we did at least like five or six sessions on that. No, because um, Mythic Mythic Odysseus of Theros uh, just came out earlier this year. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying that we did that one in particular. I'm just saying that I remember us doing something related to Greek mythology. Oh, the first ever campaign I did, or the first ever one shot I did was set with uh, Greek mythology and everybody was humans. Oh was yeah. 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 That's what it was. Did. That's what it was. And everyone was like yeah. a fighter or some other version of fighter yeah. or <laughs> yeah, it was super dumb. And if you want to be a fighter, you could also be a fighter. Um, <laughs> <sighs> yep, yep, yep. So, what's this Icewind Dale thing? Is um, that... it's basically. Um, it sounds vaguely like someone's frozen trying to... north. Okay. Hmm. I could import Rezo because <laughs> it's technically where he's from, wherever that is, wherever I decided that is. He's from a frozen northern mountain village. So whatever I arbitrarily decide, decide that to be, he could be from there. We could do a backstory for him. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. Ultimately, uh, but the, the reason he's wanting to do Icewind Dale specifically or Wild Mount is because they already have maps and everything. Oh yeah, that's uh, very in. helpful. Um, so he would have to do less of that. I mean, all he has to do for the... Odysseus, whatever it is, he's just get uh, regular maps of Greece. That's also um, a possibility. Um, let's see. Spartans, prepare for glory. Uh. <laughs> oh, okay. 
figure out um, some sort of, I mean, figure out some creature that I could play that, uh, you know, just goes around and just keeps shouting out this. <gasps> I could play a Kenku that kicks people and, sh and shouts, this is Sparta every Ooh. time he does it. <laughs> there are maps. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it. Because I think that'd be actually funny to play to play a Kenko who's like one of his like predetermined phrases is this is Sparta and just starts kicking people. <laughs> oh. Uh, where is that? Oh, J Seed. Oh. Gerald. And we now have a new level of messed up 2020 meme. Which I'm just threw into the chat because I find this to be amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I am Harambe the White. Oh. <laughs> uh. It's uh, it's pretty good. Um. I just I have no words. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if it was you I was talking to, if I saw it on Reddit, but I saw something, um, where it was like uh, it was like a comic strip. Uh huh. And uh, it uh. It was uh, Michael coming up to God, and he goes, "All right, I've got it all done." And goes like, "Really? You did put all the the uh, the downfalls into the the twenty twenties." And Michael looks up at him, and goes, "The twenty twenties, like as in multiple." And God was like, "Yeah, I gave you a decade's worth of stuff." It's like, mm -hmm. "Oh, I I." I just everything into 2020. Really? A whole decade? Oh lord. <laughs> Let me see here cuz I'm pretty sure that I am absolutely the person that sent that to you. Uh, Are you? 2 weeks ago when we did our last episode. <laughs> here it is right there. 11/14/2020 in the World's Worst Podcast interaction channel. <laughs> oh, is it in the interaction channel? <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> Okay. And and it was Gabriel, not Michael, you know, because he's the messenger. Well, I just threw one out. Yeah. Hey, at least I got one of them right. I just find that funny. Um Oh yes. Scrolling up, scrolling up. Why is Luke Spider there? Scrolling up. Lucas. No, uh, because we talked about him last week. Oh. Why is Broke Butt putting pictures of me in in the podcast channel? Well, I mean, because she was saying that you looked like one of those people who has like the blacked out thing over their face. Um, because the mask plus beard plus glasses looks like it your face has been redacted. <laughs> That's what my mother. Well, my mother didn't say those words specifically. Yeah, but she was she was like. Half of your face is not even there. More than half of your face is not even there. The only thing yeah. we can tell about that person is that number one, he likes binary, and number two, he is bald. <laughs> oh, she should be happy. That's the shirt she bought me. She did mention that as well. Um, uh, let's see, last week was craziness. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I I'm not even gonna try and and uh, watch that. That's fair. I mean, it is the world's worst podcast, and it definitely qualified last. Um, <clears throat> we had a lot. My goodness, I've gone too far. I'm back in October. No. Yeah. Eleven fourteen. Where? It's white. And uh, has black lettering on it. See spiders. Uh, what? No, now I'm back in eleven twenty one. I don't know how, how you're am I missing, missing this. this. All right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Because I was exp I, my brain was picturing a comic strip. That's mm -hmm. why I couldn't find it. Not a comic strip. Yeah. Yes. 
It's, it's between Apollo Robbins and Robin yeah, Williams. No. What year was it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, word. Word. Yeah. So if if that is in fact the case, I'm actually looking re- uh, forward to the rest of the decade. It's going to be smooth sailing. Right? Right? Uh, why, why are you so quiet, Elvin? <laughs> So, uh, I haven't seen particularly a lot of them, but I have seen a couple episodes of Family Guy, and there's one where he makes a very, uh, perhaps racist joke, but I do find it funny, where they have, you know, they're depicting, you know, the Jews and slavery to Egypt, and the one guy saying, you know, we Jews, we're doing this the smart way, we're getting all of the oppression and terrible things are going to happen to us out of the way right at the beginning, so as soon as we get kicked this whole Egyptian slavery thing, it's going to be smooth sailing from here on out. Yeah, that went real well. <laughs> that went really well, didn't it? <laughs> Which is entirely the joke, but... Um... <coughs> Jokes you can't make <coughs> in 2020. <coughs> Otherwise, <coughs> you'll choke to death. Wow. <coughs> Karma. <coughs> Hillary Clinton, I said it was a Jewish joke. I didn't say you killed Epstein. <coughs> Please stop. <coughs> She's using her force powers. <laughs> oh, I'm going to die. <clears throat> mm. Ooh. <clears throat> oh, that was fun. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. Um is there yeah. anything else? Um I'm sure there is. Um, um let me see. What else is there? Uh Okay, so we talked about the Mandalorian. We talked about D and D. We talked briefly about the Muppets. Um, Did we? Yeah, we're doing a sequel. <clears throat> right. Um, You're right. We did sneak that in there. We did. I, it was it was more than less attention uh, intentional. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I watched the uh, Muppet Show again while we were in Disney. And I noticed some things this time around that I've never noticed before. Such as? Um, So you know the part where uh, at the very beginning where they're making, where they're in the lab and Beaker turns on the machine to make the 3D effect? Okay. Um, If you look up at the top, they're actually funneling 3D glasses into the machine. I've never noticed. I didn't notice that. Never noticed that before. Uh, sounds exactly like the sort of science that Dr. Bunsen Burner would uh, would would practice. Yep, <clears throat> I thought it was hilarious. Yes, um, nice detail there that I've never noticed. Very much in character. Um, I still can't talk or breathe. <clears throat> wow. There we go, everybody. Don't drink in podcast. List of things that could be taken the wrong way. Number four. Oh, oh. So I also went and watched the Country Bear Jamboree for the first time ever. Okay. It is raunchy. Like, like raunchy, raunchy. Like one of the songs is literally uh, three bears singing about how every time they uh, meet a guy who's them on, they get uh, um, turned away. Say that again, you cut out for a second. Probably for good reason. Say it one again of the anyway. songs <laughs> one of the songs from the Country Bear Jamboree at Disney World is about the three uh, about three bears talking about how every time they get turned on towards a guy, that guy turns them down. Alrighty. <clears throat> yeah. Uh-huh. Um and that was probably one of the most mild songs in the show. 
We should tell Fang about this song. Perhaps he can sing it for us. <laughs> Um, uh. that would be a legitimate question though if you do pass the Sunday rains to Mumbles are you going to join us as a player? I don't know he would have to change up things dramatically you could just become Joroth <laughs> 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 And why would he have to change up things dramatically? Because I know everything. I mean, as soon as he takes over, you you know nothing. Yes, that's what I'm saying. He would have to change things. If he kept doing the things that I have planned, then I would know everything. I don't think he would have any issues with doing that. Not at all. In fact, I could see him bringing a couple of things much uh, bringing things together in a much more cohesive way um like if i was the one what are you writing, trying to say i'm i'm saying that if i was the one writing some things for this particular campaign um one of the things that i would have done already at this point maybe not told the players about but I, i'd be i'd be planning this out would be the forming of a coalition between Moloch and Bishaba. To accomplish whatever their independent goals are. That's just one of the things that I would do. Because those are the two, um, you know, negative I deities. Can, I can definitively say that if you knew all the details, you would not do that. Well, I know I know none of the details. I just I just know as a as a player trying to get his character to some sort of satisfactory resolution, I have three different ways of doing so at this moment. And um yeah. That is one of the ways. But, uh, and actually that's probably the cleanest way to make it happen. Um, but not knowing what else is going on, I, I don't know. Until, until I know whether or not you're going to be continuing on as DM there, um, I'm going to refrain from asking <laughs> what I'm missing out on. Ah. Uh, my, my extreme curiosity and wanting to know. Um, yeah. I I don't know what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Cause, um, I think, uh, I don't think that Sundays is a good day for Mumbles to do. So I doubt he would be interested in taking over. I mm. don't really want to end the campaign because you... I'm invested in it as much as you are. But, you know. And... I, you have two other people who are now much more invested in it than we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, if push came to show, perhaps it could be a campaign that got moved to a different day. Maybe, possibly. Doubt that too. Oh. Have we heard anything? I mean, just since since it's kind of on the on on the on the. Up for question at this point, have we heard anything back from Tony in a while? Um, Tony is way too busy with life. Okay. Hmm. I almost wish I could say that. <clears throat> <laughs> like, I'm I'm pretty close to being there. But, I mean, like... See, this is kind of the thing, um, just the stage of life in which I find myself. I have just now encountered something which I greatly enjoy, d and I mean, you know, just now being like the beginning of the year. That's still fairly new. I'm 30. It's not that big of a, that's not that big of a, you know, length of time. Um, <clears throat> and so with that being the case, it's like, I want to spend time doing this and it's good because I get to spend time with friends, people like that, um, good folks. At the same time, it's like, 
I'm also having like major life events happening that are very draining on my recreational time. Um, and so adding more things on or, or shifting them around is usually kind of a traumatic event for a couple of days or weeks. Um, so, it's difficult. I, for one, hope that no matter how it happens, somehow or another, this Sunday campaign keeps going on, even if it's on a different day, um, or something to that effect. Because I think that that would generally be... I, I generally think that that'd be a good thing. Generally and genuinely. And I know that you are not particularly a fan at this point of being a DM, but as someone who has been uh, a player in your campaigns, um, I personally think that you've been doing a very good job. So I appreciate the effort that you have put in, and I don't particularly say that enough, or probably ever before. <laughs> Knowing me, I probably did not never say that before. Um, unless reminded by Fang. I will say though, being an NPC is a lot of fun. I almost I I aside from the fact that I'm not really involved in the story other than what the DM tells me to do, I actually almost kind of prefer being a, an NPC. Almost. Because you get to have a lot more fun in certain areas. Um like last Thursday, uh not last Thursday, Thursday before. I was uh, I was there for to be a magistrate or something in Friendly's campaign, and then <clears throat> in the midst of being the magistrate or an like arcane council member, or after I finish that up, they go out and they're like going through the town, they're going through shops, and Friendly's like, "Uh, we need a shopkeeper, Gabby, be a shopkeeper," and I'm like, "Okay," and I just you know made something up on the spot. And now I'm like, oh, I kind of want to be this shopkeeper, and and I, I I have created motivation for this shopkeeper on the spot immediately, just based off of you know, fifteen minutes of role play. I'm like, that's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, yes, I very much enjoy the role playing part of D and D. Um, the trick yeah. is not running roughshod over everybody else. Yes. Which is sometimes very difficult. For you. Um, <laughs> not just for me. A lot of, there's, there's a lot of folks who have difficulty with that. Be, I mean. Yeah, Ducky's alive. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't saying anything, but. I did. Uh. So, have you ever seen any of the videos from How It Should Have Ended? Particularly, huh? okay, on YouTube, there's a channel called How It Should Have Ended. Yes. Okay. Um, and they particularly specialize in like superhero films, and they have the superhero cafe with Batman and Superman yep. sitting there. Uh -huh. And Batman's big thing is every time that there's a pretty girl involved. I am Batman. Huh? Yep. Not, not, not just I am Batman, but like. Um, Every time there's just a pretty girl ball. Exactly. Yeah. That's Ducky. Yes. 100%. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> hey, do you want to know my oh. dark and tragic backstory? <laughs> <laughs> that is the perfect comparison. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Why did you do that? Because it's how my character would react. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> did you notice that I'm never in the same room with Bruce Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm sorry, <laughs> but not really. 
Oh my goodness. It's so accurate. <laughs> oh. Broke butt, when you hear this, be kind and don't chill, Ducky. <laughs> or do. I ain't scared. Uh, I'm supposed to do. Uh, per friendly, I am now supposed to do a collab with Ducky. And that's going to be fun, but at the same time, it's going to be like. Let's go. Uh, well, I mean, it's not that I'm supposed to, but I, he gave me the option kind of thing, and I, I'm going to try and do it because I think it'll be fun if we can pull it off. Um, but, um, again, actually, broke butt right now. Definitively, do not show this part to Ducky because spoilers. Um, <clears throat> so, friendly now wants me to bring back the vampire character Taro to be like a uh, kind of a. Um, a guiding figure to move the the his party along to their next encounter after the one that they're about to do, and with that, Ducky's character in that campaign has like major issues with with Tarot. and so friendly's like, well, that'd be a great time for you to do another song. And I'm like, number one, I'm so glad you're volunteering me to do a lot, whole bunch more work. Number two, um, this is not going to go well because you know Ducky's gonna have issues the other ones are probably gonna have a bunch of issues why why are you trying to get me to do this uh like this is not gonna go well they're not gonna believe me they're not gonna do anything like from a standpoint he's like well just try and work that into the song and so my first thought goes to number one um uh dr facilier from princess and the frog i've got friends on the other side and then i go wait a second if he's trying to cut a deal with them what better song could there be than strangely all strangely enough the other side from the greatest showman where there's like mm -hmm. a back and forth between you know barnum and yep yep and i'm like so i could play I literally have that album as my alarm clock i know what you're talking about i'm, I'm sure you do but i'm just saying i'm just saying um get the idea is to get ducky to uh do the uh the um of Codwell, yeah, Car yeah. Car Carlisle, Carlisle, yeah, get get her to do like his half of the lines, but obviously mm -hmm. change everything so that it would actually flow within yeah. that campaign, yeah, um, and also cut out some profanity because I don't do that. Um, pretty sure Ducky doesn't More either. Profanity. You you're not aware of the profanity in in, in that song? Yes. Okay. I'm aware. Okay, just, I'm just, from your previous statement, that seems highly unlikely, but I hate to be a shock to your system masters, but, you know, I'm not saying it's the worst thing they could have said, but they do say it a couple times, you know, maybe you've heard it once or twice, in the millions of times you've probably heard it at this point, but that's, you know, and seen the movie and a number of other things, um, but aside from that, um, yeah. So it's, 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 it's a work in progress, and I got to talk to her and yeah. figure out if she wants to do it, because she said... I started something when I did the Be Our Guest parody there because now like half of his uh, players want to do a song. Mm -hmm. um, apparently Ducky's also one of them, but she hasn't put forth a lot of effort in that area yet, maybe because she doesn't have you know opportunity or something like that. And so this would be a good way to like try to move that along. And, but I've basically turned his... D and D campaign into a musical. <laughs> Broke butt is doing an NPC for him, and she's doing a song. Lord. And so, <laughs> it's like, I mean, I'm not saying I'm sorry, but I'm not saying this is what I intended this to go either. So you know, it's just is what it is. I've I've turned his D and D campaign into a musical, and it's it's uh. It's fun, but it's a lot more work than I was intending to do. And I still haven't done his theme song yet. That's okay. You still haven't done mine either. There is a... There is the hint of a time restraint on his. There is no time restraint on doing the laws of Minecraft. Um, I disagree. Okay. Explain. I need it done by next Friday. Uh, we'll file that under the list of things that are absolutely not going to be happening, Jim. Um, <laughs> I need it done by the end of the year, then. That's more, more, more feasible. 
Like, so I probably, uh, this actually, no, that would not have worked. So I was going to say, I probably should have tried to do this this past week because I took the whole week off. But I had a bunch of other like personal things going on that did not, that was not going to happen. Just not at all going to happen. Um, but week after this coming week, I'm also taking that week off because I have to use a bunch of time off before the end of the year. That's more feasible. I could probably, I could probably fit in both, um, the Spookers theme song and, and also laws of Minecraft on that week. Feasible. Likely, yeah, but feasible. Because, I, I mean, Spookers, I'm just, I'm just, uh, um, broke butt again, don't, don't tell Ducky this, but, um, the, <laughs> the, the Spookers one is basically just uh, redoing, um, the DuckTales theme song. So, that's, and there's only like, 80 words in the entire song. So it's not super difficult. <laughs> I just haven't done it yet because I'm lazy and busy and all that kind of stuff. I've got that in my head. Thanks. You're welcome. D -d -d Danger right behind you. There's a stranger out to find you. What to do? Just grab onto some ducktails. Woohoo. That's too high. Woohoo. Grab on to some ducktails. All right, yeah. Those are the words, man. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, at least Disney didn't do what Warner Brothers did with Lola Bunny. What made everybody in the nineties a fuzzy or a furry? <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> and it's not that they were a furry. It's just that they're like, I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yep, that's a problem. On that note, <laughs> um, anything else, Masters? Nope. Okay. I feel this was good. Glad you had a good time at Disney. Glad you're back. Hopefully, uh, things will continue to be positive and we'll be able to move forward and great and encouraging and um can't use the word positive again um uplifting directions as things continue to play out um looking forward to whatever mumbles comes up with uh looking forward to episode six of the mandalorian um there's a lot of good things to be looking forward to right now yep Taking 2020 long enough to do it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's a whole other story. Anyway, um, that being said, thank you everyone for watching, learn, tuning in, listening, whatever the terminology is that you want to apply to this. Sass, we thank you as always for being our dedicated listener. Uh, broke butt, we thank you for filling in pitch hitting last week. Um, that was uh, very, very beneficial. Um, I apologize for all the mean things I said to you, except for the one. Um, yes. Anyway, um, looking forward to next week. If you enjoyed this, please feel free. Not just feel free, feel obligated to like, comment, subscribe, and share this podcast. Especially share, as that is the way that we will someday grow from three to four viewers. Possibly. Anyway, um, we will see you all next time. <gasps> Goodbye. Later.